consummate professional. Um, and someone else who is a <laughs> professional joins me in the studio now. Hebs, or I am Hebs, as you'll find her on social media, is a presenter, coach and host of Growing Up British, the podcast. Hebs, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm excited. You said Brit-ish. Brit-ish. Yeah, yes. I've broken it into two words. I've made sure that I'm, you know, I'm saying it correctly. Um, cool. it's, it's lovely to meet you in person because I feel like, you know, I've I've seen your, your work and content and listen to your stuff over the last kind of three years and even before that as well when you're appearing on other people's podcasts yep. but we've never met IRL we've been in the DMs for a minute I know <laughs> we've but been then, liking each other's stuff to be fair I do feel like um lockdown happened and you know all of that stuff and I think I've asked you to be on the show before and it was at the wrong time because it's like Ramadan and I've asked you like at the the wrong kind of places but we're here now we've made it happen thank you for not giving up on me basically I, I will never <laughs> give up on you I never will um so let's kick things off by talking about the podcast which is called Growing Up Brit-ish what does the name what does the name mean um no that's not actually the question where does the name come from and what does Brit-ish mean to you okay so there's a lot of things like growing up in London mm -hmm. born and raised I've noticed there's a lot of like um references to like growing up uh black growing up white and it's like really forgotten about all the other different races in London London's a beautiful mix of cultures um so for me it's like growing up Brit's ish so the emphasis of the ish is growing up as third culture kids in the UK so you're from somewhere but you live somewhere else and you're trying to navigate through life um, from your culture to your faith and the social narrative around you right so the Brits ish part is when I go back home mm -hmm. so I'm from Sudan and Egypt they're like oh you're a foreigner yeah. I'm just like no <laughs> I'm one of you guys and then I come to London which is my home mm -hmm. truly my home and people are like so where are you really from mm. or you speak really good English for someone who's foreign I'm just like oh babes I got I got a degree in journalism <laughs> yeah but it's just it's just interesting because like you're constantly having to shift and adjust yourself and your identity and you're trying to discover who you are and I think there's a lot of um cultural stigmas taboos and mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to just create a podcast that's inclusive to everyone so even if you're not an ethnic minority if you're raised in London or somewhere in the UK you're surrounded by them. So therefore you probably we, we create our own culture basically yeah. as as minorities, I guess. Yeah, but it's also you know, it is a kind of I guess a, an interesting juxtaposition, isn't it? Because it's you know, it's that kind of thing of like where where do I actually belong and how do I like you said work out my identity and you know, where I do feel safe and where I do feel at home when I've got all of these external kind of stereotypes coming at me and messaging that, no, you don't belong there. No, you do belong here. No, you don't belong there. 100%. And I guess at a certain point, it's just like, oh, all of you just shut up yeah, and I'm yeah. going to make this work for me. 100%. And also when you, when you get to know other people, um, you realise despite you being from different cultures and different race or different religions, you have similar overlaps, mm. similar struggles. They're not identical, but we can celebrate them. We can talk about them. We can cry about them. Um, but it's just like understanding the frustration, laughing, at, laughing at it to an extent. So like how maybe we grew up differently than someone else. Yeah. Um, but ultimately having that narrative and just like um, embracing our differences and, and the title of Brits-ish. Yeah. So, it makes yeah. it uh, it makes total sense, and I think it's that kind of like shared experience, isn't it? Even mm. it, though it might be you know in a different place, or it might be you know a different stereotype that someone's dealing with, it's like to be able to have a space where it's like actually this is our experience, or this is my experience, and this is how I've experienced this, and this is how it makes me feel. It must feel like such a relief, and I can imagine that there are you know a lot of people listening who are like, ah. Oh, you just said exactly what I've experienced. You just said exactly what I thought. You just said exactly what I've experienced. Literally. So people, um, I get a lot of DMs and people going like, you literally speak to my soul. And they're not people who are from my background or even my religion at times. But I, they can, they resonate with a lot of what I talk about. Whether it's the taboo of mental health, whether it's the taboo behind divorce, whether mm. it's whatever it is. Um, they're just like, I thank you for having a conversation because we don't have these conversations often. And we don't see people looking like you. Um, that are having these conversations other people that I don't necessarily can see myself in mm -hmm. so I'm I'm grateful that it's doing its job um, but yeah it, it makes me feel like what I'm doing is um, purposeful and effective so, yeah. yeah and representation is so important it's really important because and, and I know that something you talk about is that a failed marriage and, and divorce that you experience you're now 
remarried and in a very different, you know, situation and, and very happy. But why has it been so important for you to be so open about that experience and to talk about it? So similar to you, mm. what I realise is people receive well, like people really appreciate vulnerability. Yeah. And I think what I had to do is risk me being open to then open that narrative and that opportunity for people to now have these conversations and feel freer to talk about it. Because, for example, in our culture, which is separate from religion, yes. it's a massive taboo mm. to have a divorce. But it, like Islamically, I'm Muslim. It's not a taboo right. to have a divorce. It's there for a reason and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I felt like in order for me to be true, mm. I have to be as transparent as possible to allow my podcast to resonate the way I want it to. And every time I've been vulnerable and spoken about whether it's divorce or my dad's passing, the amount of DMs, they're probably the most DMs I get. Mm. People going, I really appreciate your honesty because I'm going through the same thing. And then that's where like my life coaching for women transition because I just realized there's so many women who want to talk to me and I want to be able to create that platform and that safe space for them you you mentioned like culturally divorce is a, is a taboo mm. was it scary for you then when you were like right I'm gonna I'm gonna just lay all my cards on the table and just talk about this and I know you're very kind of strong and resilient uh, but at the same time was there part of you that's like oh Yes, I, I, I was crippled at times. Um, I self-doubt kicked in. I felt like it was, I couldn't see that, the, that this feeling and this anxiety and panic, that feeling to ever end. I felt mm. like it was going to be a continuous, overwhelming feeling. I might as well just go back to what I know. And it's going to be a lot of answers and some shame on my mom, my mom and dad's family, even though they understand it. It's like, I now have to break the news to someone else and then yeah. they're going to probably judge me. Um, but I just had to just bite the bullet and just go, do you know what? It's about my son. It's about my happiness and serving my purpose. And if I'm in an unhappy relationship and I've done what I can to try and serve it correctly. Um, yeah, it's, it's never black and white, but no, we're of, here and we're celebrating. Of course, <laughs> but, you, but you go through that experience once. But I, I guess my point was the talking about it publicly as well. Like, was that scary? Because you with the podcast, that's something that you've you've done. And I think now you do it. You're so kind of confident with mm. it and you're you're very kind of clear, etc. But when you first decided you were going to talk about it, yeah, that yeah. must have been scary. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Um, when I first spoke about it, um, I, ex I anticipated backlash. Mm. I anticipated someone telling me about myself. And I, to this day, I still get it. I get trolls. I get the Haram police. I get don't we all? keyboard warriors um, who don't have, obviously, a face on the Instagram or the TikTok. But they're just quick to tell me that I'm not good enough as a woman on my disgrace. Um, but I know those people are just upset human beings that need hugs. Mm. So I don't <laughs> really mess with them to too much. It. Yeah, I feel bad for them. Um, it was definitely something that I was hesitant about. And I also had to make sure I addressed it tastefully. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to disrespect the father of my child. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want to sort of come across as this angry woman because I wasn't. It's just an unhappy situation. So I felt like despite the hesitancy and the fear of it, I just had to just accept I'm grownish. Like I need to just just do it and own it and run with it and it's probably like the best decision I did yeah and I can imagine because I think when you really are like you said earlier on when you really are vulnerable about those big things that you go through in life that's when you're going to resonate with the most people and I like mm. the way that because obviously the podcast will grown up British Brit-ish and then there's you're also grown-ish which is kind of how I feel as well or adult-ish that's how I feel mm. um that I know that I'm an adult, but <laughs> sometimes I don't feel like it. <laughs> You're like, am I really? <laughs> am I? No, am I? Um, when when it comes to the podcast, what yeah. has been your your favourite recent episode? Um, I think I really enjoyed speaking to Aaron, raising boys to men. Yes, um, because I feel like we're very much the yin and yang of the situation. So he's co-parenting. Um, I'm co-parenting and it's just nice to bounce off and like learn lessons from each other and the beautiful thing about my podcast is that we're very mindful of like what reflections can we take what can we unlearn what can we relearn and um, with me and him it's just being able to have that um, human conversation mm -hmm. with no ego yeah. no pride no judgment no yeah. anger like actually listening to each other exactly and there's no trashing each other and I think mm. that's that's the refreshing part about the, the guests that I do have on is that they're just here to like just speak their truth 
listen to my truth and then we can exchange notes and I think what's good also with me and him is that people really received us well mm. and people were just very grateful for our conversations and being able to reflect truly like and transparently about how difficult and also how beautiful it is to co-parent yeah and it's it's great to hear on podcasts people having you know actual proper conversations mm. where there's no raising their voices and they're not getting angry at each other and it's not this sensationalized you know argument where it's actually a you know a, an adult ish conversation <laughs> um and i think that's really important to see that kind of represented to show that actually you know men and women can can conversate and discuss things and you know be able to have a a great conversation and have an outcome that's good because we don't always see that when it comes to to podcasts um what has been the best bit of feedback that you've had from a, a listener of the podcast um I'm, I'm sure you've had loads over the I years, think to be fair. I'll give you like a general one because I, I, I'm not going to lie. There's like an overwhelming amount of people that just, mm. which is, I'm sure you can relate to it, where people are just pouring into your inboxes. But I think for me, is when someone says to me, like, I've given them hope. Mm. Um, my most my most thing is that um, my husband and I, we met through um, a Muslim dating app and we now have a baby together oh. and we now have a blended family. And people who are about to go for a divorce or just been for a divorce and they're just like, you've literally given me real like real life experience hope rather than like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. you, you're speaking it raw, whatever. And it's like the fact that I've given someone hope, the fact that I've, I've given someone a light that maybe prior they didn't see. That to me makes me feel like, all right, cool, I'm serving a purpose. It's still working. We'll continue. Yeah. And and I think that that is, you know, to be able to give that to people is really, really important, isn't it? And it must feel good. And not that that's the reason you do it, but it must feel good because, like we said, it, you know, it, at times the things that you've spoken about, it's been scary. It's been mm. kind of like risky. You've had to deal, you have to deal with the negative side of it, don't we? And that's everyone who's on social media. And I think that's something that I kind of knew before, but that's really hit home to me in the last couple of years that no matter what content someone makes, even if they're, you know, they make baking cakes content or whatever it is, everybody, has something to they say. all have to deal with negative people. There's yep. a lot of people out there just spreading their kind of negativity everywhere. And you, you have to kind of, if you're going to keep doing it, you have to find a way to not let it impact you, don't you? It took me a very long yeah, time to not too. care. Trust yeah. me. Like for a very long time, I'm like, but why don't you like me? Mm. And then I realized like these people actually they are just making a lot of noise and there's no real substance behind it. So, yeah, I no longer pay attention. to. Them. And also you probably wouldn't like them anyway, if, if you did meet them in real life. We I think it's that. Hangout. Exactly. It's <laughs> that thing of you don't like everyone. You can't expect everyone to like you. And mm. also I always think as well when I'm, you know, I kind of talk to, to my friends or people that I like or people that I look up to. And I kind of say to them, have you ever left a negative comment? None of them have. Mm. And and so I think, you know, kind of generally happy, contented people uh, don't do that. And I also think if you're creating content that triggers people that much, then, you know, you're doing something right as well. So I tend to reply to some of them and I'm just like, clearly you're deflecting your energy. It's OK. Yeah. Like maybe you should take a moment and heal, <laughs> then come talk. Yeah. So maybe I'm... you should listen to what I'm saying and take some advice. Yes. Yeah. Um, you have been putting out the podcast regularly now for, for three years. I know there's three seasons. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of stay m like motivated? Um, I think for me, it's, it's my... Because I, cause I enjoy doing what I'm doing and it's a genuine passion. So there's a difference between people who maybe are doing it for the sake of um, clout or they're doing it for whatever, whatever intention they're doing it for. Um, for me, I've always had a passion for media, radio, um, that's just been my area and to know that I can use my voice on those platforms but very purposefully it's just part of my existence so for me if I can now do something even wider and reach more people um, it's enough motivation having people coming up to me in the streets and going Hebs like literally can I give you a hug like, and I'm just like yeah of course so it's these little moments of people showing appreciation that keeps me motivated when I'm thinking, oh, what's the point? Someone <laughs> comes along and just, just pulls their heart out to me. And I'm just like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm serving a purpose. I've not lost sight of my mission. I've not sold out. I've not, you know, I think it's just understanding why I'm doing it. Am I still achieving it? I think sense checking of that and um, having people remind me why I should continue doing it. 
Um, but yeah, I, I love I love it when that happens though. When you kind of you have that kind of moment of self doubt, or you're just thinking, oh, this isn't working, and then suddenly someone will be like, hey, are you? And then you're like, oh, okay, it is. Cause yeah, the, yeah. And it's funny, isn't it, that, that I think the stuff that happens in real life is not that it's worth more, but it, it impacts you more mm. than, you know, the kind of messages that you get online because there's actually somebody in front of you and you can kind of receive that energy and it becomes just a really, you know, a really lovely thing. Yeah, I mean, my mum saw it the other day and she was just like, oh, so people do know you. And I'm just like, yeah, mum. Because, like, she just watched back and she was, like, an excitable mum in the background Aww. watching this woman, like, go, oh, my God, we love you so much. Da, da, da. And she was just like, oh, so your podcast... Because she doesn't really know what's happening in the world, um, when it comes to my world, at least, when it comes to podcasting. And she had, like, a really proud daughter moment and or mum moment. And I was just like, yay, I've done you proud. So it was that's that's another reason to keep going as well. Yeah, and I'm sure that you there's there's lots of reasons that your your mum and would be very very proud of you because it's a it's a great podcast and I think that everyone listening should just go and give it a whirl. And as I said in the intro, um, you are of course a, a coach as well. And I know you said that's kind of come off the back of you know the the podcast and realizing that there's a lot of women out there who need that kind of support etc. How do you find time to balance everything? Um, what. <laughs> we figure it out we're yeah. women we just we just figure it out when everything's happening we still find a way to make it all work out um but for me it's just prioritizing my family um and then just structuring my day to just to just be able to be available for everyone because I'm available for my mum um I have to be available for my family my extended family my work my side hustle my everything but I think it's just um yeah just knowing how to juggle things I think just as women we do it yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm. I'm. It's like a broad statement. Say women all do it, but I think we do. I think we're just built a different way. <laughs> well, there's a will, there's a way. That's, That's what they say, isn't That's it? it? And I think some stuff just comes as second nature. So you, you, you don't feel like you're taking on quite as much as you are because some of it's just almost become ingrained as well. Yeah, so and when you're enjoying elements of it. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, when like, you're doing stuff you love and you're passionate about, and like you said, it's it feels purposeful. It doesn't feel like an effort, does it? No, it feels like a joy, that's and that's it. what we like. And that's what it's been like having you on the show. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you for being here. Can you tell people where they can find you? Yes, uh, you can catch me on Instagram. I am Hebs with a Z, uh, grown up Brits ish dot H, and also on YouTube, uh, Mama Hebs. There you go. It's all there. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Growing up British. With the shh on the end. Extra shush. Let's emphasize That's the extra it. ish. That's it. Yes. Look, it's been so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here. I Thank really appreciate me. it. I'm glad we finally met uh, face to face. And I'm sure it won't be the last time. No doubt. <laughs>